All right, so hi everyone. Um, I'm gonna be presenting on um, day in the life of an Amazon intern. Uh, so just gonna be talking about my past summer at Amazon as an intern. Um, I'm gonna start with an, a little introduction about myself. So I'm actually a fourth year student. Um, I'm computer science and engineering major and my computer science and engineering major uh, falls under the school of engineering actually. So um, I'm a peer academic advisor for the School of Engineering. And if you all are not familiar, basically peer academic advisors, um, what we do is we help advise students like ourselves um, under the School of Engineering um, with their different questions when it comes to um, coursework or change of major or anything um, academic related like that. So if you wanna reach out to me or um, any of the other peer advisors as well, um, we are available through ZotChat on the undergraduate engineering website, as well as um, live walk-ins, and we also can answer questions through the U-G-E-N-G-E-G-R at uci.edu email. So yeah, um, that is what I do on campus. Um, another small and a fun fact involvement that I'm a part of is <clears throat> I do like singing. I'm a musician, so I'm a part of the Circle of Fifths acapella group on campus. So yeah, that's just another small fact about me. And um, the part that um, I'm presenting about today is my past Amazon internship um, this past summer um, for the Amazon Luna team. So I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about that. Um, so the recruitment process. So um, yeah, if you wanna apply um, to become a software development engineering intern like myself, applications are actually live right now. Um, and if you uh, stick to the end of this presentation um, and fill out a survey, I'll actually be providing a link to like a direct application um, for the position that I, um, I did last year. And the recruitment process is actually quite simple. Um, in the beginning, you just have to apply and um, it just answer a few small questions about yourself and attach a resume. So the resume that um, I actually submitted um, the past year uh, for my Amazon internship is right here. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's pretty basic. I just have my education with my major, my minor, my GPA, as well as like the different courses I've taken. And this is like the main portion that I wanted to display um, when I applied to this position. Uh, so I think when I read the application last year, the main portion that I wanted to highlight um, for any CSE or CS majors out there was my data structures and algorithms course. I think these are like two of the courses that um, companies like Amazon actually really prize highly. So I, if you've taken these courses, I would definitely recommend highlighting this on, on your resume or your application. Other than that, you don't necessarily have to take data structures and algorithms um, to, to be able to apply to Amazon. Um, if you've taken any of the major like um, languages, uh, computer languages like Python, C, C++, or Java, these are also things that I would recommend to highlight on, on your application as well. And um, so prior to Amazon, I actually didn't have any internship experience. And um, a lot of companies actually, funnily enough, for an inter internship or opening position, they do like to see that you have previous internship experience, but that should not deter you from applying. Like regardless of not or not, if, if you've had a previous internship or not, you totally should apply. Um, I just put for my work experience, um, my um, part-time job on campus, which is a peer academic advisor that I mentioned in the past. Um, but in order to like, um, still show my skills and still show that I'm qualified, I did end up listing some of the projects that I did. Um, and most of these were actually um, class related projects. So uh, projects that you um, do during your time at UCI can be listed on your resume. Um, and for example, like I mentioned before, my data structures and algorithms course, it had a lot of different cool projects with some different concepts that I that I was able to list on my resume. So I would definitely recommend just like um, finding finding other ways. If you don't have previous internship experience, that's totally okay. Just make sure to try to um, include other forms of skill that you that you have and other experience that you have. Um, so the internship or the application process after you submit your resume and your application, um, they'll reach out to you um, after a certain point to say whether you uh, get an online assessment or not. And this is the, basically the first part of your interview, your online assessment. So there are three parts to the online assessment and they're done over three separate periods. Um, not necessarily in this order, by the way, um, it's just, I just listed them out. Um, they're all viewed equally as well. So definitely um, treat all of them like um, 
like equal parts. So the first part for me was actually code debugging. So basically they gave me around 20 minutes to debug multiple problems. And these were actually pretty difficult. So I definitely recommend like trying to prepare um, ahead of time. And uh, in, in a little bit, I'll be recommending on how you might be able to prepare for something like this. So basically they give us a bunch of problems to debug and it's your job to try to find all the issues in the code in a very short amount of time. It is a time crunch. <clears throat> the next portion of the online assessment involved um, solving two coding questions. So this is like what you would see in a lot of different types of online assessments for different software related companies. Uh, these coding questions, um, you can definitely practice online. They give us around 70 minutes, I believe, to answer two coding related questions. And there are definitely ways in which you can prepare for this as well. And the last portion of the online assessment was actually a little different than something I'd um, experienced while applying to other companies. It was more of like a work simulation behavioral type thing where they kind of test you on like your team building or sorry, like your team related, um, like how you are in a team and like uh, like how you answer emails, how you, that sort of thing that like um, are important in um, office etiquette. So I definitely recommend looking into that as well. And if you're successful with your online assessment, um, you'll be eligible to um, apply for a, a single interview um, to, to actually get the position. So um, for me, I had like my interview around a month after I took my online assessment. And in the interview, I would basically divide it in two parts. It was with one, one live coding question, similar to um, the two coding questions that you'd done in your online assessment, except this time you're um, actually interacting with the interviewer, him or herself, um, where they'll be asking you about your code and you'll be coding in front of them. And they'll ask you to like um, show your understanding and show why you did something or like what it actually does, like what your code does. Um, and then after that, after you answer that coding question, they'll ask you like some basic like um, team questions, like behavioral to see like what you would be like in a team environment, in a company environment, right? So for all of um, the coding related questions, uh, if you're not familiar with Leap Code, I definitely recommend becoming familiar with leak code because it's um it's like a super good way to prepare for um coding style interview questions um and i won't give away exactly what my interview question was for uh, my internship but like i'll just say that like my interview question for the live interview was directly taken from leak code or like i shouldn't say directly taken from leak code but you could find the direct question on leak code i actually didn't practice that one itself but i practiced something super similar so i definitely recommend leak code to practice this sort of thing just one second i'm going to take a drink of water All right, so let's move on to the next portion. So you've made it to the internship. What happens next? Um, so this is like the fun part, right? Like uh, what the internship experience was like. So firstly, you'll be able to um, be assigned to a team. So I was actually assigned to the Amazon Luna team, um, which I'll just describe as the Netflix of video games. So basically it's still um, in early access and it's still ongoing, which is something that was really cool to me that I was working on something that was in development. Um, and what it is, is a cloud gaming service. So similar to like a Netflix like service, you have to pay like a subscription fee once a month and you'll be able to access different video games that you're gonna be able to play on different Amazon devices or on browser. Um, and, and it's basically like, um, yeah, like the Netflix of games. And I, I found it super cool. Um, the team was actually located in Irvine. So I was able to work uh, remotely from home uh, because of the pandemic, of course. But they also did give us the option to visit the office if, I, if you wanted to. And I actually did visit the office a couple of times, which was super, super cool. Um, so this part, the, the part I'm going to describe is probably similar to um, a lot of what um, interns will have to face. So the first couple of weeks, involve mainly setup and onboarding. So setup is sounds super easy in concept, but it was actually more complicated and difficult than I expected because there's just so much to set up when it comes to um, <clears throat> the laptops that you're gonna work with and the environments you're gonna work with. 
so it actually took two weeks worth of work to be able to set up my Mac to fully be able to uh, work. And it was all, it was ongoing. There's always like different things I needed to add when I uh, reached different portions of my project. So, um, and then they also give you like onboarding tasks. These aren't as bad, you know, they're just typical, like familiarizing yourself with the company and their values and everything like that. Um, <clears throat> oh, something I should mention for Amazon, something super important to Amazonians is the Amazon, um, the core principles, I definitely recommend prior to your interview um, to look up like what the Amazon, their different principles are, because it would give you a leg up when it comes to the behavioral portions of your, of your interview. Um, so the beginning portion though, um, getting back to like the setup and everything, the, my main struggles was with setting up environments and with the ramp up itself. So how would I describe ramp up? Ramp up means basically like you're coming to a new company, you have no idea, like you've never seen a lot of the projects or a lot of the technologies they work with. So basically during the beginning portion, your job is to learn as much as possible, to ask as many questions as possible to your team, to try to familiarize yourself with the projects and like what exactly they're working on. Because you know, like in industry level, the scope of the projects are like huge. <clears throat> the stuff they deal with is like really huge. And even though as an intern, the scope of your project would be much smaller, to be able to understand its place in the larger scheme of things can be really intimidating at first. And uh, it was intimidating for me as well, because I'd come in with no prior experience and um, no knowledge of anything, really. Like, um, <clears throat> so it was intimidating at first, but like, um, you just have to take things like step by step, which is like what I was doing in the beginning, like going from small to big in terms of understanding everything. Um, <clears throat> And then in terms of my internship project, so every intern will be assigned an internship project, like I mentioned, a little bit smaller in scope to like what the rest of your team might be working on. Um, and this project is supposed to be um, uh, completed over the course of your internship. Um, so how I would how I describe or how I would divide it up is the beginning portion of when you start working on your internship project, maybe like a couple weeks in after you've been more set up and like familiarized, onboarded, whatever, um, you start working on your design. Um, and usually you have like a mentor that you can work with. Um, and the mentors are your best reference because um, they'll be able to answer most of your questions. Um, so I definitely uh, reference your mentor to try to like come up with a design that you can make for your particular project. So they basically give you a task, like a problem, and that you have to come up with a solution. So you have to come up with the best design um, on, on how to solve it. And then it's best to ask your team on like what they would do with similar projects, right? Because they might use specific tools and spe specific environments that like other teams might not. So it's best to like um, work with what your team usually works with so that um, once you leave Amazon, like once you leave as an intern, people are able to use your work and be able to make updates and make changes to your work. Right. So yeah, basically the first portion involved creating a design document. And there was actually a design review that I had um, in the, uh, in, I think it was my fourth week, third or fourth week. And this is like, usually some, a lot of the interns were talking about as like something um, super scary because you're getting so much like harsh criticism, but you should never like see it as like, like anything negative or uh, anything bad, or they're looking down on you, your team, because this is like, mainly the portion where they help you to learn and grow, right? So um, it was it was really, really helpful, all the, all the constructive criticism that my team gave me. And then once you actually come up with what you wanna do, what your design is, um, something that was really emphasized and important with my manager was to create good estimates of like how long each task would be because you're taking a big assignment and you're having to make it into little small pieces because obviously like you can't, for an entire project, you can't just do it all at once. You can't like um, rush it in like th the last week. Like it's not like a school project where you can procrastinate for like three weeks and then work on it on the last day or something. It's very different than that. So like you have to come up with task estimates and you have to be realistic with these task estimates. Um, and that was something that I really learned that you have to be really, really realistic with, um, with, um, with that. So that's something super important. And then once you come up with your task estimates, that's when the implementation begins. And this is like the majority of your work. I mean, this is like the actual work, right? Um, and uh, yeah, like it, it was quite an experience. There was lots of ups and downs. And especially when you are new, everything is learning, 
right? You, you come in with no experience, but you have to come out of it with a completed project and a, a better understanding of what you worked on. So um, yeah, like that's my biggest emphasis, like that like during this time, like you shouldn't be afraid. You're not gonna know a lot of things, but your team, hopefully if you get a good team, um, they'll be there for you to answer your questions and be able to give you advice on how best to like, you know, like approach, approach everything. So yeah, that's like the main takeaway. Like learning is huge when it comes to come to comes to these projects. Um, so I'm just gonna describe a little bit of like what my project is like without getting into all the nitty gritty details. Um, so basically, uh, for my team, I didn't work directly on the service itself, like um, the Luna, like you know how like Netflix and a subscription like services like that, you'll have like uh, like a UI depending on your device, like your iPad, your computer, or like your TV or whatever. So there's something similar for Luna, of course. Um, that's not what I was working on. I was actually working on an internal tool. So for my team, um, but it was, um, it was really nice. It was really cool because I still got to see and learn like a lot of like the types of resources and like the types of tools and environments that my team would use. Um, so basically my job was to uh, design a front end page for an existing internal website to display like some new records in, um, in various databases that my team was using. Um, and uh, I had no prior experience, of course, but like what I ended up having to do was to use uh, various Amazon Web Services, AWS services, um, to retrieve, filter, and index different uh, like database records, right? So some of the, the main ones I used were um, AWS Lambda. This is like the most common like bread and butter type um, a tool that um, an Amazon employee might use an AWS Lambda function. So basically how, how I see it is like, it's just basically a function is like, it, ha it has a, a problem statement, it has a task that it needs to do. It, it basically solves an issue, right? So like basically one AWS Lambda might connect this, this service to this service, right? So I needed to get database records and I needed to connect it to a front end website, right? So basically one AWS Lambda might be tasked with filtering these records. Another AWS Lambda might be tasked with like indexing these records, right? So this is like the main tool that I use. And on a, um, another tool that I actually um, use a lot in, in, um, in my pro in the scope of my project was an elastic search service this is a little bit more of like a niche thing that was specific to my project itself um but basically what what it was used for was to make it easier to search through a large amount of data right so like um on a website like an internal tool if you need to like look up something really quickly this is what helped help to do that like the elastic search like emphasizing the word search it helps to search basically right so um anyways i came into Amazon not even knowing anything about AWS services. So like if you're an intern and you have no prior knowledge, that is totally fine. You will learn a lot on the job. Um, but yeah, that's why I found this internship so great because of how many different things that I learned in the scope of like what, two and a half months. It was really, really cool. Anyways, so uh, the next portion, let's see what I write here. Yeah, so my project was actually super complicated. Like I mentioned like just a couple of tools, but like I had to use a lot of different um, things to connect everything because there was like, it wasn't just one database, it was many databases. Um, so there was a, like a steep, steep learning curve on like how to like get into the technicalities because there's a lot of rules, like maybe um, maybe this, this, this function or this tool doesn't work in this scenario. And there was like a lot of time having to figure out, make adjustments, and like my initial design obviously like wasn't going to be the finalized product, right? Because once you actually start working and implementing, you'll come into obstacles, come into roadblocks, right? And um, so majority of, the um, majority of the time I was like working, it wasn't actually like, oh, like I'm stuck on this coding thing or like, I'm not sure how to code this up. It was mainly like the design and like all the rules, like uh, with all the environments and stuff. So um yeah, uh, it just, there was a lot of time spent like learning about all the, all the concepts like AWS and all the tools and like how to apply them. Right. And many of the issues that I got weren't actually from like coding issues, which is like very interesting. Right. Because like in school, when you're, when you're working on your assignments and everything, uh, you're, uh, you're, you're like trained to like, just 
get like you have like a specific problem and you have to give a specific solution that's not how how it necessarily works when it comes to working in the industry like a lot of your issues might come just from like uh like an account not being set up correctly or like um maybe you didn't use the right command line tools when like running running um the system because like you're not running just one one um one page of code you're like testing it against an entire database an uh, entire system of code so yeah a lot of the issues i came from or a lot of the issues i came across actually came from non-code related things so that's just something to look out for um yeah um so yeah that like that's basically like my internship like um my internship summarized in a nutshell um there's definitely a lot more to it that i won't be able to get into in the scope of like an hour but uh uh basically my takeaways from my internship was that it's good to ask a lot of questions because you're there to learn um hopefully if you get onto like a good team they'll be responsive and it's a good idea to be like friendly with your team members so that when you run into issues they're willing to help you right they're willing to answer your questions and things like that being a good team player is something that um, managers and your teammates they really really value so not only like um not only like doing work for yourself and for your own goals but also like doing something to like help and benefit your team um, and benefit them in the long run rather than like doing short-term things shortcuts to like solve your specific issue doing something um that betters uh, everyone in the long run is definitely more aspired for right like um there were like a lot of times where uh in my project i came across situations where i was like oh maybe if i did this this would be easier i'd be able to finish my work quick quicker and like it would be it would be better for me but then like i was like if i import this in this way maybe this could benefit another person who has to look at my code in the long run right so um definitely uh definitely definitely always take the steps where you can um where you can help your team uh also it is obviously ideal to finish your project but you um it's not like necessarily man necessarily mandatory um what your team wants to see isn't necessarily to see whether you can like finish um finish everything like 100% but do a crappy job at it right mm -hmm. kind of like what i was mentioning before if you finish a project but like your um but like the your the, the way you implemented things were not ideal then they might like have less favorability of it than if you finish 80% of your project but did it in a great way right so you should always set realistic expectations for your time time frames and your estimates and be realistic and honest with your manager to see how much you can really work on because anything that you don't finish can definitely be picked up by another member of the team after you're gone um and if you follow all these steps if you're a good team player if you work really hard and do your best work um you're you might be able to get a return offer and amazon is actually known for giving a lot of return offers i myself i did get a return offer so um uh, i will i am considering returning to amazon next year after i graduate um so definitely 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 like follow these steps and you will be successful and like yeah like i've said this a billion times but like you learn so 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 much during an internship and i highly recommend for everyone to apply for as many opportunities as possible not only amazon but like any company that you're interested in whatever they do or like um if you're interested in a specific career path like i definitely recommend exploring this um just a fun fact i applied to I don't know. I don't know if it was exactly a hundred, but like tens of internships and Amazon is actually the only, um, only offer that I got like, um, as a third year, like this is the only offer that I got, which is kind of funny because you'd expect that a, a company like Amazon might be harder to get into than some of the smaller companies. That's not true. Um, so I definitely apply to every, every company you can. And yeah, so, um, uh, now I'm, basically concluded with my presentation itself so if you all have any questions um i'll be answering them now i saw that there was like a couple of questions in the chat that i'll get to and also here is a survey that um i'd really appreciate if you're you all would be able to um fill out i'm also going to link the survey in the chat in a second uh, and if you if you um if you fill out the survey you'll be able to get the link to next year's application for amazon internship um 
And yeah, I'm oh, actually I'm going to stop the recording for for the Q&A portion. So uh, let me just stop that right now.